moved this story because it has never been proved. But has anyone talked about that? No. So does it make a difference if a tree falls in a forest and nobody's there to see or hear it? Has it really made a sound or whatever the hell that? Does it make a difference? The desired message was sent out. This is fact, even though the New York Times has just corrected it. It's fact to most of America now. Mission accomplished. We're being divided. We're being put in boxes, kept here, kept there. They're dividing us. If they can get 5% here, 7% there, pit each other against each other, they keep their power. America, you are being used. You're being used. And we'll show you how to get around it next. Talking a little bit about uh, being used, being pitted against each other, and being set up. And you've got to know what the score is. You've got to know what the game is so you're not set up and you're like, oh, I've seen this. It's like we're on TV. I take you tonight to Indianapolis. They've had some recent trouble with race relations after a controversial arrest back in May was made of a biracial teenager who suffered severe facial cuts and bruises during his arrest. One officer has been recommended for firing. Protests for more firings have been held. Let the court system work it out. If they're dirt bags, fire them. But one pastor in Indianapolis had his own idea about how to deal with the tension. He came up with one of the worst ideas I think I've ever seen, and that includes the segue. Pastor James Harrington of Mount Vernon Missionary Baptist Church. He hatched a brilliant plan to put the Indianapolis Police Department to the test. They invited a 17-year veteran of the force, Sergeant Matthew Grimes, to speak at the July 24th event hosted at the Municipal Gardens, a Parks Department facility in the city. Sergeant Grimes has done hundreds of these sort of public appearances. He is a community relations sergeant. That's what he does. Well, Pastor Harrington, along with park manager Willard Gutton, planned to have an altercation break out between two black individuals while Sergeant Grimes was speaking. The goal of which was to see how does a white officer react to two black people fighting. Okay, can we just get off the crazy train for a second and just let me first of all, please don't mess with the police. Please, they're under an awful lot of pressure right now. Not like to have them messed with. I don't care if you think you've been wronged. Maybe you have. Find an attorney. Go to court. There's time for that. Um, find the bad cops and punish them. In fact, I think you should throw the book at bad cops even harder than just regular old people. But I don't happen to agree with the president that the cops act stupidly or are racist if they're cops in Arizona. If you're basing that on the fact that they're blue, that would be racism on your part. Root out the bad cops. Second, don't entrap people. I don't think we let the cops do that to people. You shouldn't do that to the police. And third, this is a pastor of a church. What, I mean, what... What does this have to do with God? What, are you, what possible good is coming from this idea? Cop pulls a gun and shoots everyone. You say, ah, ah, I knew the police would act stupidly. Here's what happened. Sergeant Grimes giving his speech, which was about improving police citizen communication to a summer basketball league program when the planned altercation breaks out. Well, Grimes doesn't know what to do. He does what any cop would do. He intervenes. And in the process, he's pushed down and thrown to the ground. He later had to go to the hospital for his back. He's doing better now, by the way. Now, in defensive mode, he pulls out his taser gun, which at some point, someone steps in and tries to explain, whoa, whoa, you've are, you're on candid camera. <laughs> you know what? You're lucky that people didn't lose their lives in this. The last thing you want to do is threaten a police officer. What are you kidding me? These people step in front of us and the bad guys every day of their lives. I don't care what color you are. Challenging a police officer if you're white, black, red, or purple is stupid. It's not going to end well for you. This was a stupid, stupid thing to do. But the pastor doesn't even seem remorseful. Here's his reaction. Their job is to protect and serve and how that they, even though they have families and children and everything, that they don't put that in regard to their own safety. Okay, you, didn't think, right you, you don't think this was dangerous? Uh, I don't in think a, it was dangerous because it was in a controlled environment. Wow, a controlled environment. You're setting a cop up without him knowing about it. Uh, how, how exactly is that controlled? 
we are trying to do anything that we can to save the lives of our children. So we have to have live demonstrations of violence carried on by professional actors who are trained to do what they do, then that's what we do. What are you even talking about, man? Staging a fight in front of cops and throwing the cops to the ground doesn't actually sound like anything to do with saving the lives of kids. If anything, it puts lives in danger. If anything, it teaches those kids who are watching it that you can screw with the police. Our police, as I said, are under tremendous pressure because of civil unrest, because of people like this, because of leftist, because of the treatment they're getting from the White House, and because politicians and labor unions are squeezing our police officers, our teachers, and our firemen. They are squeezing them and using them as pawns. The last thing they need is this. Are there bad cops? You bet there are. Are there bad janitors? You bet there are. You deal with them as individuals, not as a collective. You deal with the bad cops and you deal with them harshly. The overwhelming majority of cops are upstanding and honorable people who stand between you and a bullet. I showed you this playbook. It was from the Weather Underground. They hated the pigs at a minimum. They want a distrust of police, and they've got it in this administration. I want you to be different. I want you, if you see a cop, you stop and thank them. They'll probably go, what? Are you, what? you stop and thank them. You let them know you appreciate the job they do every single day. But even, even if you don't, don't worry about it. Because when you call them, even if you hate them, even if you call them pigs all the time, when you need them and you call them, they still come to your dirtbag house and they'll stand between you and a bullet no matter what you call them. Because that's the kind of people they are. An article in the Wall Street Journal asks this question of Glenn. How is it that one set of people knows for sure what it means to, quote, take America back, but another set keeps contradicting them? Well, Glenn's got the answer. Now oh, I have a feeling it might be a snotty, snotty break because we're going to quote from the Wall Street Journal here. You see this, this is the summer of recovery. The administration is adding job after job to the government payrolls, pouring stimulus money into wonderful products like, I am not kidding you, cocaine for, money, for monkeys to see if they like Doritos when they're high. Why? But it's also the summer of restoration, and we've made a pledge to you to restore history on this program, to show you what really happened, good and bad, to bring us to a place where we are now. How did that happen? Well, it's getting under the skin of the left. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, for the elbow patches. Don't like this program very much. No, no. I've told you, a fire is starting. You stand in that fire because the fire is truth, just like Moses in the burning bush. It will consume all the lies and all the falsehoods all around. But you better make sure you're in the fire and you're telling the truth. Once it starts, it's hard to put the flame out. But here's an article in the uh, Wall Street Journal today. Look at this. Written by Thomas Frank. Thomas, let me ask you a question. You greedy name hoarder. Why two names? Thomas, Frank. Two front names. Why? Pick one. Is it Frank? Is it Thomas? I don't know. Confusing. Anyway, Thomas slash Frank has claims and has had some fun pointing out the historical bumblings of public figures, great and small. That's what he says. Only those on the right, of course, because Thomas slash Frank is so smart and we are so, so very dumb. He's so smart that one of the things that he is pointing out here is that Jim DeMint uh, said that uh, Europe boomed after World War II. Ah, Frank slash Thomas staunchly defended socialism in an article entitled Jim DeMint's Capitalist Fairy Tales without ever mentioning that the, uh, the uh, years uh, that he's insisting that European nations starting doing well, you know, it, it contradicts uh, DeMint's point in the book that uh, the United States, under its evil capitalist economy, sent the Marshall Plan over and pumped in more than $13 billion in aid to those socialist countries. In today's hit piece, Frank slash uh, Thomas enlists the help of Harvard historian Jill Lepore. Oh, I love Jill. Oh, oh, I call me Jill. Call me. 
She informs Frank slash Thomas that the history of our founders is critically important to America's. No. So the question arises, what do these fundamentalists, um, uh, they, they come to the inevitable question, why do so many others disagree with them? How is it that one set of people knows for sure what it means to take back America, but another?